Hi everyone. Thank you for viewing this presentation. My name is Bernard Pope and I will be talking about BioInitio for building bioinformatics tools with batteries included. I'm a Victorian Health and Medical Research Fellow at Melbourne Bioinformatics within the University of Melbourne, Australia. Are we in the midst of a scientific software crisis? You don't have to look far in the literature to find articles that point out the failings of the field. Many of the problems identified in the literature are related to poor software quality, lack of reproducibility, and lack of experience and skills in software development. The results-driven focus of bioinformatics means that shortcuts are often taken during software development for the sake of making something that works. Furthermore, many bioinformaticians are not trained in software engineering, and research-oriented projects have limited budgets for quality assurance. Fortunately, help is at hand. Many people have tried to tackle these problems and that there are equally as many papers that offer helpful solutions to the software crisis in the literature. There are lots of recommendations in the literature about how to address this problem, but they are spread over many papers and only partially overlap in what they recommend. Advice is useful, but we think action is better. Motivated by this problem, we have created BioInitio. BioInitio is a tool for starting new bioinformatics software projects following best practices. With a single command, the user can create a new, well-structured project in one of 12 programming languages. The result is a functional piece of software that carries out a prototypical bioinformatics task and thus serves as both a working example and a template for building new tools. BioInitio tries to make it easy to start new, well-structured bioinformatics projects. A simple invocation of the Bootstrap script creates a new project, as illustrated on this slide. Two minimal pieces of information must be provided. The first is the name of the project. In this case, we will call the new project Skynet. The second is the programming language that you want to use. In this case, we choose Python. As already mentioned, BioInitio supports 12 different programming languages. This includes popular bioinformatics languages, but a number of emerging languages are included too. We've tried to cover examples from imperative, object-oriented and functional paradigms. The result of running the bootstrap script is to create a functional software artifact that serves two main purposes. Firstly, it provides a working example of a bioinformatics tool using best practices in the chosen programming language. Secondly, it provides a template for making new tools. The idea is that the users will modify the template to suit their own purposes. So what does the template program actually do? In the example above, you can see the command line help provided by the program. In essence, it reads one or more FASTA files and computes simple stats for each file. And it includes a few optional arguments that control the behavior of the program. The template program represents a trade-off. On the one hand, it must be sufficiently complex to allow best practices to be demonstrated. On the other hand, it must be sufficiently simple to allow it to be easily understood and modified. In essence, the template program is intended to be a prototypical bioinformatics program. As a typical bioinformatics task, the template program reads input from one or more FASTA files, computes some basic statistics about the contents of those files, and prints the results in tabular format. Here you can see an example of the program applied to two input FASTA files. The output is a tabular display of various simple statistics about the sequences in those input files, including the number of sequences in the files, the total sequence length of the sequences in those files, the minimum, average, and maximum length of sequences in the files. However, a much more important quality of the template program is the list of features that it includes. Every one of the 12 different implementations of the template program have the same features and the same behavior. These include command line argument parsing using the conventional Unix notation for command line tools. 
progress logging that includes a record of the command that was used to execute the program and um, time stamped entries for major events of the program ex execution, including any errors that occurred. Defined exit status values, including exit status values for program success and program failure. A test suite, a version number, software packaging and a Docker container, a standard open source license, documentation for the user of the program and also for the program implementer, revision control with Git and optionally GitHub, and a wrapper for the common workflow language. As we have shown, the Bootstrap script creates new projects. It can be downloaded from GitHub and run via curl, or it can be run through Docker. We mostly use the curl option because it is fairly convenient. Here is a diagram illustrating the main function of the Bootstrap script. On the left, we have the 12 different implementations of the template program from GitHub. These include BioInitio C, BioInitio Python, and BioInitio R, amongst the 12 different programming languages we have used. The user specifies which programming language they want to use, in this case, it's Python. And in step one, the Bootstrap script clones that repository to the local computer. In step two, the Bootstrap script renames all the files and paths in the repository to reflect the new project name. In this case, the new name is new proj. In step three, the Bootstrap script can optionally push the project to a new remote repository on GitHub. From there, they can connect the repository to Travis CI for continuous integration testing. Here's an example of how to run the Bootstrap script from the command line using curl. In this case, curl downloads the script from GitHub using the URL specified and pipes it to the bash shell, which executes the script with the supplied arguments. Here is the directory structure of a newly created project called Skynet using the Python implementation. It contains a fresh Git repository, which we've abbreviated for the sake of this slide. Files for supporting continuous integration with Travis CI. A Docker file to allow the program to be easily containerized. A standard open source license, which defaults to the MIT license. However, you can choose from a number of standard open source licenses with the minus C flag. User documentation in the form of a readme file in markdown format. This includes instructions about how to install and use the program. A simple testing suite based on example input files and expected outputs with a, with a shell script to run the tests. Some Python specific files that are related to software packaging. Implementations in other languages have their own equivalents of these files. The actual source code of the program, including a separate unit test suite. And finally, a tool wrapper for the common workflow language, which makes it easy to incorporate the tool into bioinformatics pipelines. As already mentioned, the Bootstrap script can optionally create a new remote repository on GitHub for the project. The highlighted commands above are the same as we showed before. To enable GitHub integration, the user must also supply their GitHub username. In this example, the username is Cyberdyne. The user can also supply an author name and email address, both of which will be added to the code and the corresponding documentation. Automatic creation of GitHub remotes really speeds up the process of creating new projects. Once the code is on GitHub, the readme file provides useful user documentation and the open source license for the project is easy to find. Furthermore, continuous integration testing is easily enabled through Travis CI. The user just has to log into their Travis account, which comes for free with every GitHub account. And then that all they have to do is click on the new project to enable testing. Travis will now automatically start using the test suite, which is included in every new BioInitio project. The test suite will be executed for every change to the repository, which is a good way to ensure that the testing is run and to check if any errors are introduced into the program.
Once a new project has been created, we expect users to modify it to suit their own purposes. This might involve rewriting large parts of the code, documentation and test suite. However, this can be done incrementally. The important point is that users are starting from a working project that already has the batteries included. We think it is much easier and faster to modify an existing project than it is to start from scratch. Bioinitio represents a pragmatic approach to addressing the scientific software crisis. We have taken the recommendations from the literature about good software development practices and bundled them into a tool. We want to help bioinformaticians to develop good habits early on and to use them all the time, even for small scripts. Bioinitio both illustrates good practices and makes them easy to use. We hope that others will benefit from this tool and we welcome contributions from the community. Bioinitio serves as a learning aid for beginner to intermediate bioinformatics programmers and provides an excellent starting point for new projects. Bioinitio has been used in several workshops already, providing a common code base for coordination of workshop materials and an extensible platform for the delivery of hands-on practical activities. Indeed, we have a Bioinitio workshop this year at BCC 2020. Additionally, by providing complete working examples in many different languages, Bioinitio acts as a kind of Rosetta Stone and is therefore an excellent vehicle for comparative programming skills transfer. For more information, please check out our publication in GigaScience and our project on GitHub. Thank you for taking the time to watch this presentation. I would like to thank the authors of Bioinitio, Peter Georgeson, Anna Syme, Claire Sloggett, Jessica Chung, Harriet Dashnow, Michael Milton, Andrew Lonsdale, David Powell, and Torsten Seaman. I'd like to thank Bi Melbourne Bioinformatics, where I work, and the Department of Health and Human Services in the state of Victoria, Australia, for funding my fellowship. Thank you very much and goodbye.